Hi everyone, um, it's me, I'm Kay Hickox. I'm just going to wait around a minute or two um, to get see whoever wants to come will join and then we can start talking about field work, NGOs, or honestly anything you guys want to ask me. So welcome. All right, so it is two minutes past eight o'clock, so I think we'll get started. Just as a little bit of background about me, I am a 2015 Shuak leader. Um, I actually grew up and went to high school on Prince Edward Island. Um, and then I did my undergraduate degree as a Shuak leader at Queen's University, um, graduating in 2019. And I started my master's degree at McGill, um, and I'm now doing my master's degree in evolutionary biology um, with my thesis specifically looking at the finches in the Galapagos. So that's just some brief information about me. Um, I guess sort of to put where I am now in context, um, growing up on PEI, it's, it's a very small place. Um, it's known a lot for its farming and fishing. So as a child, I was always surrounded by nature and I was really lucky to be able to experience and have such direct connections with biodiversity and go to things like nature camp. So I think from a very young age, um, I knew that I wanted to do something in biology, but actually coming to the place of where I am now was sort of an iterative process and um, took a bit of time and uh, different experiences to get to where I am. So I came to Queen's University knowing that I wanted to pursue a degree in biology. Um, and throughout my four years at Queen's, I did a lot of um, different activities or um, experiences which sort of taught me what things I like more and what things I may want to continue with. So I would say for someone who's starting out in their career in academia or um, who's early in their undergraduate degree, I would really recommend um, grabbing onto or finding as many research experience opportunities as you can. So for me, after first year, I volunteered in a lab that worked on animal behavior um, and, and evolutionary biology. And that was a really amazing experience because um, I got to actually work directly with animals. It was Drosophila, uh, so fruit flies. And I learned from that that I really loved evolution, but I wanted to approach it more from a genetic level. So rather than actually working with behavior and the animals and observing them directly, I preferred to um, look more at their, their genetics and underlying um, phenomena that's going on. So um, I guess after that, um, one of the main things I would say that sort of defined my undergraduate career was my experiences um, in international forums. So I was lucky enough to take part in an academic exchange. I went to um, University College Utrecht in the Netherlands 
And if any of you have the opportunity to take part in an international experience, whether it's an internship, an exchange, or a field course, which I'd love to talk about later in my talk, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, I think these opportunities are really good, not only for personal growth, um, it shows your ability to be a very adaptable person, very mobile, to experience new cultures, new places, lab environments, but also it exposes you to a different way of thinking or different um, topics or approaches to disciplines that you might not have at your current university or the place where you're working at now. So um, in, I think it was third year, I took a field course in Jamaica uh, where I was doing um, some marine biology work. And um, in this course, I really, really, really fell in love with um, working outdoors, with um, like directly handling my samples and sort of gained a, a curiosity of the um, tropics and the neotropical environment. And that really brought me to the place where I am today. So, I'll see if we have any questions. It's a little bit unnatural to speak to myself for such a long period of time. So if anyone has any questions, I would love to hear them. I would say um, something else that I really came to appreciate during my time thus far in academia is really being able to dive into your projects. So I know we often hear um, phrases like create opportunities. Um, if, you, if you want something, you know, just make it, find it. And I know this can be really hard sometimes, um, depending on your university, maybe there are so many things going on, so many opportunities that can be overwhelming. Um, it can there be very easy to get involved with too many things or to sort of um, have too many interests or not know where to go. So I was very involved with extracurriculars during my time at Queens, but I think one of the things that I did during my undergraduate degree, which really helped me was actually just really diving into my the projects that I have in my courses. Um, so by this, I mean, if you have a project where you need to um, sort of integrate lecture material and, and create something, that you can use that as an opportunity to really investigate your interests and see how a potential avenue, a potential career avenue would actually, what it would be like, what sort of tasks that would involve. So as an example of this, um, I was in a conservation biology course and we needed to create a project that involved the public. So for this, my um, friend and I, we worked on a project for um, cougar conservation. Essentially what this involved was going through provincial legislation relating to um, endangered species and how they're managed and we found several loopholes with how um, certain animals are not actually being, being managed according to the legislation. So with this we then created a petition, um, a public forum to get people involved and some information for the public about what is going on and how they can help. Um, this was a really, really insightful experience for me because it allowed me to experience going through legislation, which if you are involved in academia or even technology, even if it's from a research perspective, you're going to have to be able to understand sort of what the existing legislation is, whether it's a technology or how you think your innovation or research will create an impact to the public and understand how that, how your innovation will um, be affected by uh, the public, by the government and how you can make it accessible. So <laughs> that's a very roundabout way of saying 
that it's important in your academic career or your undergraduate career to find opportunities to experience what it is like potentially if you pursue your ideal career. And this can help create a network and things um, and build skills. So out of this, um, we talked to politicians in the area. So we experienced talking to politicians, creating legislation, or sorry, reading legislation and understanding how um, biological concepts are directly related to the government and public policy. So let's see if we have any questions. I would say as well, um, by taking advantage or finding opportunities to research in different environments, you're really widening your perspective. Um, and in the meantime, you are gaining skills. So during my undergraduate career, I took part in various projects. Some of them um, were in Northern Ontario, which was really cool because I got to experience what it was like to be a field biologist and live out of a van for two weeks. And these opportunities really teach you life skills, like how to work in a team. I mean, if you are working for 24 hours, seven days a week, like two days, um, with a few individuals in a van, you really learn, um, you really master interpersonal skills as well as being mobile, being adaptable, which are very important for any um, young innovator today. And I think we're especially learning that right now with COVID where all of us are working, learning, studying, exploring um, in different environments or at least in places that we didn't think we would be even if that is our bedroom, um, it's a different environment and it's learning how to adapt to a changing situation. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in. Um, for anyone who is early in their undergraduate career, who may be coming from a smaller place, I would say that it is also a different experience learning how to adapt to um, university. So for me, I was going to Queen's University from Prince Edward Island. It's obviously very different. Um, the population of the whole island, the whole province where I'm from, is just a little bit higher than Kingston, Ontario. So I was moving from a province that's almost as populated as the city that I was moving to in Ontario. So there are a lot of things that are different for someone who's moving from a smaller place. And I would say that um, that's actually a really good thing because you get to learn, um, you get to be in a different environment, you get to learn more about yourself, and you again gain life skills. So I would say if you are moving from a smaller place, don't be overwhelmed. Um, by the things that are different. So I know specifically for me, when I came to Queen's University, um, almost all of the first year classes were specifically geared towards the courses and material that was covered for under the Ontario um, grade 12 curriculum. So I felt very scared, very overwhelmed about the differences that were there. But just take a breath if you ever experienced that. Take a breath and know that um, you are a shield leader, you can overcome it, and you are not alone. So, um, nothing that you can't handle. So, I welcome any questions. Something else I would say for anyone who is considering a career or pursuing undergraduate studies in evolutionary genetics, there are some things you can do um, to help yourself along this career path. So from a technical perspective, I would strongly recommend um, learning how to code, um, becoming familiar with different softwares because this is sort of the way of the future. So if we look at genetics, um, it's really important to at least have an understanding of genomics, which is essentially working with very large amounts of data. So having those skills can increase the amount of projects that you can be involved in. It can really help your understanding overall. So for myself, I um, 
love taking part in projects that have both lab and field work. I really enjoy being outside. Um, I think that as a scientist, you gain a wider understanding, appreciation, and um, really sort of value your question at a much deeper level if you directly experience it, if you're collecting the samples in the field, if you're going outdoors. Um, it's a great way to come up with new questions. Um, but I also really love working in lab, working on my computer, and sort of understanding the genetics and working through that. So I think it's really important for anyone who's considering a career, as I said, in genetics or even just in biology in general. I highly recommend um, learning how to code and learning to understand sort of what genomics is, how does it work, because it does affect every question. <laughs> I do have a bit of a biased perspective um, as an evolutionary geneticist, but it does affect it. I guess as well, I would say for anyone who is pursuing um, a career in biology or in genetics, I think that there's a lot of value in trying to understand sort of the government or um, public policy, the governing legislature, the public policy, or the public perspective that affects your question. Um, not only is this important, in my opinion, for the logistics of your project, so sort of what stuff can you do, um, but also it's really important so that you can frame your questions um, in a very relevant way. So it's, you need to know what the public opinion is, how your research will affect um, the public, and how um, it fits into public policy and the government. I think as well some specific recommendations that I would have for anyone who's going into the field. Um, all right, three of them. I already sort of covered a few. The first one, you really need to learn those technical skills, learn how to code, become familiar with what a pipeline is. The second, um, I would say explore. When I say explore, there are a lot of different means by this and, and all of them are highly relevant. So I would say explore different labs, um, approach different questions, whether that is behavior, um, looking at genetics, looking at sort of the molecular level. You need to explore different approaches and it'll help you really find what you love. Um, but I would also say explore in the global perspective. So take field courses because they are um, an amazing experience. You really get to see what it is like to be a scientist, to be an academic when you take a field course because you're in a new environment, you're working with a new team, and you're collecting data yourself in the field. And also, if you have the opportunity, you know, take an internship because, again, it's the same thing. You're um, experiencing a new place, you're gaining new skills, and you're also creating a network for yourself, which, which is very important. You need to be able to show as an academic that you're mobile and that you can um, move around and create uh, new relationships. Lastly, this is something that I wish I would have known, or at least known the importance of it, but I would really stress, um, don't want to put pressure on anyone, but I'd really stress um, working on publications. If you have the opportunity to work in a lab, um, and whether you're the primary author or a contributing author, really try um, to get a publication because it, it can really help you. It's an amazing experience um, for you to work on your reading or writing academic skills, but also it's sort of it's sort of an exterior um, representation of how, what am I how am I trying to say this? It's um, it really shows how you're truly an academic to um, other groups, other people. It can help you with funding and scholarship applications, as well as deciding where you may or may not want to go if you decide to continue in academia. So I'm just going to take a minute or two to see if we have any questions um, and ask away anything. I'm, I would love to answer your questions.
Okay, so I think now I will just briefly discuss um, some of the work that I did after I completed my undergraduate degree at Queens. So I actually took a semester off between my undergraduate and my graduate degree. I knew that I wanted to continue in academia, but I also knew that I wanted to sort of experience in a way the real world. I was very much in the academic bubble. Um, since starting my degree at Queens, I only worked at the university doing research, which I love, um, and I wouldn't have had it any other way, but I wanted to sort of be in the real world, put my um, the skills that I had learned at university sort of in practice. Um, and throughout my undergraduate degree, I had always, throughout my whole life, I have always been very passionate about um, social issues and about um, democracy. It's something that we, myself included, often take for granted um, here in Canada. So I worked for a nonprofit NGO for a few months. Um, and in that time, I traveled across the country. So I was in Toronto and then mostly Saskatchewan, um, which was amazing because I got to also meet the other Shilluk leader communities. So um, they were great. I hope you guys are watching. Um, and I uh, got to go outside, talk to everyday students, and um, learn about issues that were important to them. So this was a very um, important experience for me because it kind of widened my lens. Um, I'm sure many of us are guilty of often hanging out with groups of people who have similar interests to us. It makes sense. Um, so it was really nice to talk to. I talked to thousands of students and learn their perspectives, their experiences, and um, things that they thought that um, maybe I didn't at the time or learn what things were important to them and how they would like Canada to be in the future. Um, I think this is really important because um, if you are, a if you want to be a change maker um, or an innovator, it's really important to be inclusive um, and to learn about the experiences of other people as well as how to manage, work with, um, and talk to people who maybe don't come from the same background as you or have different approaches than you may have. So I will... Um, Take another minute for questions. And if we don't have questions, I think I will um, end this session a little bit short. But if anyone has any questions or comments um, and wasn't able to make it today, I'd be happy to answer those. So you can reach me through my Facebook profile, uh, but also through my McGill email account. I'm pretty sure all of that stuff is available through the Shulk Leader Network. Um, but if for some reason you can't access that information, you can reach me, as I said, directly through Facebook. My um, account is obviously right here. So I welcome any questions or queries. All right. Well, I think that in, um, is the end of my AMA today. I hope that some of the information I presented was helpful um, or at least provided some insight. Thanks for your patience um, from my end. Like I said, it's a little bit unnatural for me to speak to myself on a screen. Um, but again, if you have any questions or you want to reach out, I would love that. Um, and if you can't get a hold of me for some reason, go through my Facebook, or I'm sure David can <laughs> provide you with my contact information.
All right, everyone, so stay safe um, during these COVID times and good luck with the upcoming fall semester.